Coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast, our front nine starts with a crazy day and a playoff and a protest in Connecticut. The LPGA Championship was at a stunning venue and delivered a breakthrough, and there was lots of anger and headlines at Live Golf Nashville. Plus, this week's guest from the beautiful Texas Lake and Hill Country Resort I'd been at this past week. We're talking all things on the property of Horseshoe Bay Resort with Jacqueline from the team there. Everything awesome you can do outside of golf on that great property. And we conclude with NBA Championship Championship talk, reviews of Unfrosted and Eros Tour cameos, and when we always end with food, it's my Horseshoe Bay dining experience and preparing for an iconic landmark that my co-host is visiting soon. All of it brought to you by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, creators of the Phone Caddy, the Swing A Tumblers, the DJ 10 Speaker, and a whole lot more in the works. It's a versatile line of golf accessories we talk about every week because they're not only friends of the show, but they are sponsors and our chief supporters of the content that we create. We thank Desert Fox Golf for being part of the family. And the way that you can thank Desert Fox Golf for being part of our family is by checking out their website, using promo code Course of Life, and getting anything from their store. They're great golf accessories for anyone who's looking to keep their phone safe, their drink nice and cool, and their music at the right level. So again, check out DesertFoxGolf.com, promo code Course of Life to save today. interwebs and welcome to course of life we are proud to be presented by our friends at desert fox golf i'm michael he's alex and alex they were up in our old stomping grounds in connecticut at yes. tpc river highlands for the travelers championship which is always a playoff championship it ba- seems it's a banger every year at the travelers every life. year uh, there's a lot of different ways we can go with that headline. I think the biggest one that is worth looking at is that Scotty Scheffler has the most wins on the PGA Tour since Tiger Woods did with six in 2009. Scotty Scheffler now has six wins. Okay. First guy since like Arnold Palmer in the 60s to have six wins before July. Wow, before July, okay. And he's won every single... Uh, uh, um, signature, signature event yeah. since changing to a blade putter, uh, <laughs> winning the Arnold Palmer, the RBC Heritage, the Memorial, and the Travelers. Okay. He didn't play in the Wells Fargo, yep. so that's why that's why we can still say that. And of course, he won the Masters in there too. That so, too, yeah. So four signature <laughs> events with the blade putter, uh, four yeah. times three point six million. That club as maybe what the most valuable club in the history of golf in terms of it earnings. That blade putter it alone, right there. It might be. Yeah. Very much so. So Scotty Scheffler wins in a playoff over Tom Kim and over climate protesters. Yeah, yes, I was so confused. I got this wrong, I think, twice. I wasn't sure exactly what type of protest was going on. Uh, yeah. Not to get too pop politicky. It had free Palestine vibes, and then it had oil, and then climate change vibes. I don't even know what it was really in the end. But yes, there was a crazy spray paint filled protest on the 18th green of a PGA Tour event, which is the most 2020 for headline that you and I could possibly put together. This sounds like some sort of AI contrived headline for name a crazy thing that could happen at the end of a golf tournament. And sure enough, we had one. Uh, fortunately, the funny thing that I appreciated in all of it was Scotty, Tom Kim, and Akshay Bhatia scared for a moment, but had, but had a laugh quickly after. And the protesters didn't manage to ruin one of the three putting lines there on the 72nd hole. <laughs> Everyone had a quick, clear look, so it didn't really affect any of the play at all uh, after all. It's just, yeah, just incredible. incredible. And, and, and you know, it draws back, brings us back memories of the 18th green at the, the Canadian Open last year. Oh, Adam and, had one getting tackled. Yeah, Adam had one getting tackled. And I'm sure Scotty Settler felt a little odd with that many cops around him again. Oh, a little callback there. Yeah, he, he's like, God, these guys again? They just they yeah. follow me everywhere. 
<laughs> they're not going to believe is, it when he's a golfer either watching. Yeah, I mean, they might not know. Yeah, they may yeah. have no idea. C- couldn't tell if you were a player or a caddy. Just had no idea. Yep, Scotty's seeing ghosts with the police there, but they took matters in their own hands. Very quickly avoided. There was a good form tackle by one of the officers if you want to check the video out online. But the bottom line is it didn't sc- st- stop Scotty from being amazing again. You read off the stats, and we're getting into that Tiger Woods season comparison. We are not comparing Scotty Scheffler's career to Tiger Woods' career at this point, but if we're talking about a solo season accomplishments, this 2024 campaign continues to stack up against the best Tiger Woods years that we remember. I won't compare Scotty Scheffler's career to Tiger Woods' career, but I will say that Scotty Scheffler currently has the trajectory to do what Tiger Woods did over the course of his career. Potentially. Yeah. And you think about all maybe the time Tiger Woods missed due to injury. If Scotty could say, stay 20 or 30% more healthy, how many more opportunities that'll give him in the next 10 to 15 years? Or just not go to jail. Yeah. Those, those things too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So that was what was going on on the uh, PGA side of the world. The LPGA had the, uh, what was this? Their fourth major of the year? Third major? They have so many. Yeah, they're churning out. They got five memory. They're churning out. They do have five. Uh, The K. PMG Women's PGA Championship uh, at Sahali Country Club. An amazing course. Mike, I don't know if you saw images or videos Gorgeous. of these gigantic fir and cedar trees. Yeah. They're Gorgeous. over 100 feet tall, lining the fairways. Like It doesn't get much more picturesque than that. It was gorgeous. Just, yeah. just gorgeous. And uh, it, it kind of turned into a runaway. Uh, and not from who we would think, which would be Nellie Corda, who didn't even make the cut. Yeah, saw that tough emotional miscut for her, too. Yeah. Uh, it was Amy Yang, who won at seven under par, three clear of the field. She, at one point, was was seven strokes clear of the field on Sunday. Yeah. It was blown <laughs> so territory, yeah. for sure. And her first major... Mike, she's been on tour. It's her 17th season on tour. Mm, Amy Yang is, I believe, a year or two younger than us, like 34, 35. She's quite literally spent half her life out on the LPGA tour. So a true grinder out there and finally breaking through on a major stage. She's won tournaments before, uh, but you could see the relief. I mean, that's like, just think about that. It was her 75th major before getting her first major title. Just, you know, you just got to keep trying and you'll get there. Knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Yeah. Uh, Also, shout out to Lexi Thompson during her farewell tour. Tie for ninth, top 10 finish. Yeah. And by the way, that gets her into next year's KPMG. Should she choose (laughs) to have like one return farewell or just say hi one more time? So just I mean, why not? Yeah. Why not? Just show up. Just do the do the Annika and just show up every once in a while for a tournament and play. Yeah, she could. She could enter that role. for Sure. Yeah. Why not? It'd be cool. Uh, there also was live golf this weekend in Nashville, which is worth talking about either because of how angry John Rom got, how <laughs> big the crowds were around major champion Bryson DeChambeau big time. or Phil Mickelson line dancing. Yeah, what a trio of headlines right there. Yeah. A lot, lot of stuff from the Music City to unpack. Um, yeah, starting pre-event, like all sorts of country-themed celebration right down there on Broadway. And a great video emerged of Phil Mickelson getting his line dance on. Mike, he'll quite literally dance to whatever tune li- Live Golf plays, both yeah. literally and metaphorically. And he showed that. But I do give credit. Nice moves from Phil, and he seemed to kept, keep up pretty nicely with the steps. Yeah, he did indeed. John Rahm was mad at what? Uh, all the drones that were getting in his way? Yeah, so what do you think about this from a production standpoint? Liv is very heavy on the drones, they, and yeah. they love keeping them pretty low, too, so they like the overhead flies, but they're ill-timed sometimes when they move them into a different spot, or they're trying to move them hole to hole or get a different T angle, and Rahm just became increasingly infuriated with them and literally just went into an F-bomb-laden rant about how much he hates the drones uh so they were they were kind of they were kind of getting close and then the volume was a bit much i would say around the t-box you know i can understand the volume being an issue and them getting close to you but look john you guys still won the team portion of the event terrell mm, hadn't true. carried y'all and you still won so it's okay 
yeah, I think I think the the check that comes in tomorrow morning will make up for that a little bit. And uh, yeah, Terrell Hatton getting it done for Legion thirteen. But yeah, the Bryson crowds were very impressive. Yeah. I mean, he's taken that show from the Today Show to Jimmy Fallon, bringing the trophy to everyone. What I do appreciate him uh, seeing out of him, Mike, is he's really letting everyone touch the trophy and let everyone be a part of the win. So if nothing else, that that was good to see this past week in Nashville. You know, it's really hard for me to hate Bryson right now. I know, I know. I told <laughs> you, I was said, like, people are going to. That said, I, <laughs> even though they don't want to, I still hate him. <laughs> yes. He's got a goofy grin on. He's he's he's. Uh, I still don't like him. He I'm uses just gonna, 3D just, printed clubs. It's just uh, it's not. Can't wait to drill you with these positive Bryson headlines all summer. It's gonna be great. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be horrible. I hope he does horribly at the open. <laughs> <Yes>. I really <laughs> do. <laughs> um, the PGA Tour heads next to the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Uh, can can. Can please, can Ricky Fowler please have another good week? I know, right? And when I when I look back on this and I remember last year's Rocket Mortgage, I was like, oh my, this was that merciful, like, thank God Ricky Fowler got another win. No offense to my boy. You know I am one of the OG Ricky Fowler fans. Yeah. I wore orange and followed him at 2010 at the Travelers when he was a rookie on PGA Tour with long hair. So I go way back in my Ricky fandom. But he has sniffed nowhere near winning. He had a shot at last summer's U.S. Open at LACC, fell short. And I was so pleased to see him get this win. I hope he can just find a little bit of magic because, yeah, his his game is kind of back on a little, little bit of a fritz lately. Yeah, I think that, you know, we'd love to see him do it. But unfortunately, I think Ricky has just become one of those guys who's going to be on tour and only get a handful of wins. Yeah, I know. And like everyone like remembers that year when he finished top five in all four major championships. He's knocked yeah. on the door so many times. It's like he's got that beautiful swing. He's got the great personality. It's like how is this guy not just broken through once on a major championship stage? Would obviously still love to see it happen. Uh, maybe maybe an inspired week in Detroit could, could give him one more run at maybe an open championship here in a few weeks. We'll see indeed. Uh, Alex, this week you're back recording uh, at your home base in Austin. Last week you were coming to us from Horseshoe Bay Resort. And from everything you've put up in terms of short videos on uh, your Instagram and on our YouTube channel as well, this place just looks gorgeous. Yeah, I know. And last week, remember, we highlighted the four championship golf courses. Uh, But beyond that, there is a whole resort, which is family dog and everyone friendly that has a really cool golf installation as well that's for everybody so beyond the amazing golf uh, this is a really cool conversation with Jacqueline from the team there highlighting everything great uh, beyond the four championship courses at Horseshoe Bay Next up on the Course of Life podcast we're at the Horseshoe Bay Resort in beautiful Horseshoe Bay, Texas and joining us from the team at Horseshoe Bay is Jacqueline LaJoy unpacking everything that's great about this property. Jacqueline, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Great to have you on. We actually have a commonality in that I got my past life. I was born and raised in the New England area, and you're actually coming to Horseshoe Bay from the New England area. Explain where you came from. I am. I spent six years in the mountains of New Hampshire, a tourist town of North Conway. So right in the heart of ski area, seven different ski mountains surrounding the area, and some fabulous golf. When it was great in the summer, of course. Right, yes. A a big flip for you in skiing, snowboarding country. There is the summer golf. The season's limited. This is 12 months of golf-packed resort action here. Um, What was that move like? Getting yourself, I know, back to Texas, but, you know, having that little bit of culture shock coming from New Hampshire. Yeah, you know, we were prepared for it. So um, 30 years in Dallas before that, but so great to be back in Texas. You know, people talk about the Texas hospitality. It is a real thing when you've been away and you come back. It's just amazing the way the people embrace you. And that's been one of the great things about coming here to Horseshoe Bay is the people have made the experience just amazing. Nice. So you've got some Texas context. I'm curious what your context and knowledge of Horseshoe Bay had been, maybe even before, you know, coming into the role and then what you saw when you, you arrived and first got here. Yeah. You know, like most people, a little bit limited experience about Horseshoe Bay, but right. it's something that you hear about and you know, there's a fabulous resort out there, but a lot of people don't take the time to go and explore it. And when you get here, it's just so amazing. Four golf courses, a full service marina, a full service spa, 
uh, six dining outlets. It, it's just, uh, you can pack more than a weekend. I mean, a full week of activities and not repeat anything twice. And just the level of the experience. It is like a tropical getaway right in the hill country of Texas. Yeah, that is a very important thing to feature because there are lots of properties in Texas and other really warm weather climates that aren't necessarily close to bodies of water. And they try and kind of mimic or recreate a beachy tropical type of vibe. You don't have to do much acting to, to create that here at Horseshoe Bay. No, I mean, right from the minute you drive into the property, the palm trees, the water fountains, it's just amazing. And then with the sitting right on the constant level lake, the sandy beaches around that, and then all the amenities that the resort has, it is truly an escape. It's an oasis. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, the, there really is a beach. Make sure you check out the pictures and social media and plan a trip here so you can see it for yourself. But one thing that kind of helps make the Bay Area really great is this idea of a constant level lake. Explain what that means for our outside audience and what makes that so effective for the location of the property in the area. Absolutely. So, I mean, of course, Texas has been in a drought for so many years. Yep. And Ever since I got here, basically, 14 years ago. <laughs> I know. They say there's a cycle, but, yeah. um, you know, all the lakes around us are very, very low at this time, where it even limited the boating and recreational opportunities. But for us on Lake LBJ, it is a constant level lake because it's tied to a power plant. So the lake stays within about a foot oh, all okay. the time. Yeah. So boating, uh, you know, everything is all go here for us at Horseshoe Bay. Nice. That's okay. The power plant, that makes yeah. a lot more sense now. Very cool. Um, so, and one of those very cool uh, water features that's just gotten a lot of buzz on social media, you can't avoid it on your feet if you do any sort of traveling at all, uh, is the floating pool. Explain uh, what kind of everything that went into that floating pool being launched and, and, and just how beautiful a spectacle it is for the resort. It's amazing. We just opened on Memorial Day weekend and it, it was several years in the making. Yeah. So, uh, you know, our owners are always looking for ways to enhance the property and through their international travels and visiting Lake Como, where they do have floating pools because they have no sandy beaches. The concept was born and brought here to us. So now we have this amazing pool that is floating in the lake. And, um, you know, it has a capacity for about 100 lounge chairs. It has private cabanas. It has bar service. And it's just an amazing way to enhance your lake experience. That's great. That I can imagine the light bulb going off when they were in Lake Como. I mean, like, we could bring this. To Texas, and it would blow everyone's mind. And they right? Did. Yeah, <laughs> and it did. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of national coverage about it. It's just everyone is thrilled and enjoying it so much. And, and beyond all the, the waterside, tropical activities that you can partake in, just day to day, explain kind of the range of things that are going on for a variety of families and age ranges that are coming to visit Horseshoe Bay. You know, there's a little something for everyone. So for our youngest families and kids, we have the Jungle Kids Club. And that is uh, a school of activities. It has a climbing wall and a two-story slide. It has all of the like day camps, summer camps, evening time out. So the parents can get away. They can go play golf. They can go to the spa. And the kids are taken care of and they're busy. They're having swimming lessons and crafts and all of that sort of thing. And then just for any age level and skill, we do have our whitewater putting course. And that is an 18-hole putting course. It is amazing. We have just gone through a lot of upgrades and enhancements. So very lush greens and white sand bunkers. But at night, it is lit with neon. So different color neons. And we have the music out there. And we're doing different theme nights. And all of this is in the area with our 360 sports club. So you've got your pizza and wings and cocktails and all of that out on the patio. And it's just an amazing area for families to enjoy together. Yeah, you're setting a very nice scene there for sure. And I love the way the putting course is situated. It's a nice way for the resort and property 
to showcase an intro to golf without, you know, requiring anyone. They don't have to get out on the course. And it's a great way to intro people to the game that may never pick up a club or think that they want to. And then they have an experience like that on a real Bermuda grass putting green. And it could change their perception of the game for sure. It could. I mean, you sink that little hole in one and you're hooked. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and by the way, hole in one's not easy to come by on that putting course. This is like a regulation par 72 out there. There's some there's some legit tur- twists and turns on that course. I can't wait to play that uh, with my stay. One other thing I wanted to highlight, which is really cool about the resort, is I've seen a lot more presence of different festival style events here. Um, country music artists coming in, different barbecue and brew type of events. Um, what's been the the motivation behind bringing more events like that to this type of property? You know, because we are here in the hill country, a little bit of a drive for people, we do want to create special opportunities for the families to come out. So we have a full calendar throughout the year. Um, we launch with a comedy festival in February and bring in top national comedians. Then our big, big event of the year is the Balloons Over Horseshoe Bay Resort and the Hot Air Balloon Festival. Thousands of people come out. The balloons are amazing. There's arts, there's crafts, there's food. It's it's tremendous. But then we roll right through with each of our holidays. We do have special entertainment. We're doing fireworks over the lake. So if you want to get out of the city and come and do that. But then our Beer by the Bay, That is our big country music festival. That's going to be August 8th and 9th. We have six country music artists, but our headliners this year are um, Eddie Montgomery and Clay Walker. So we're bringing in some big talent. And then we roll right out of that and we do a wine, dine and jazz event in November. So we're hitting, you know, everybody's interest, a little variety in that. We have Grammy award winning jazz artists coming in and there's a wine stroll on Saturday of that event in November. I don't hate that. That sounds like a nice day. (laughs) It's amazing. And and all the culinary that goes with it, you know, our resort, celebrity chefs for the wine, dine and jazz. It's really fun. And it's really a long history. These events have are celebrating their 10th year, their 14th year, it's something that's become a tradition for our members and for resort guests. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like when you have events like that at a property like this, it kind of doubles the memory because not only is it, you know, we went to Horseshoe Bay Resort and stayed there and we also saw Clay Walker. We also went to this festival and tried these beers or wines or whatnot. And it just adds the the overall experience. And yes. It keeps you guys in the cycle of the events as well. Really it nice does. to be around. And we just keep trying to make them bigger and better and yeah. bringing in top talent. Nice. Awesome. Again, it's Jacqueline LaJoy with the Horseshoe Bay Resort joining us here on Course of Life. Uh, let's do a tricky question here about bet your favorite month it could to visit, maybe activity-wise, event-wise, climate-wise. What's that go-to time of the year where you really you want to see Horseshoe Bay guests? in full force? You know, yeah, that is a tricky question um, because a lot of people enjoy different seasons, but if you want to avoid the heat a little bit, I'm going to stick with that uh, April, March, April time oh, period. Yeah. That is when we do our balloon event. So. Oh, perfect. Spring and fall yes. are undefeated in Texas. Spring and fall and for <laughs> golf, of course. Yes. Nice. Um, how about um, like uh, the wedding and event presence? Can you talk just a little bit about that? Have you seen awesome, really extravagant weddings or unique celebrations? Because I've walked the property and seen a couple potential venues where I could picture yes. how awesome it would be to have a celebration like that. We do. We have amazing venues for special events and weddings. Uh, we have a lawn that overlooks the lake and that's beautiful. And then we have um, really several different areas for outdoor and indoor we are actually about to break ground on a new event pavilion as well nice yes so we're doubling space on that but our staff who puts these special events together they do a tremendous job and we have seen very extravagant events and then you know just all levels all family types and uh, from corporate to bridal, it, we we have a great presence for all of those. That's awesome. Yeah. Again, it's just uh, it's just a one of one place. The way the setting is here in a place like Central Texas, you don't quite expect what you're going to see here until you actually set foot on the property. Um, so at Horseshoe Bay Resort, we got to ask Jacqueline the 19th whole question that we ask all our guests. 
There's a variety of 19th holes uh, options here at Horseshoe Bay. What would be your go-to meal and drink order then at the 19th hole? Yeah, okay. So you're right. I mean, with four golf courses and different clubhouses, but you know what? Our Slick Rock Clubhouse is known for the burger and it is excellent. Um, so that would have to be my go-to on All that. All right, stack your burger. What, what's in it? What's oh your my. dream burger here? Well, I'm a little bit classic. So I'm just, you know, your lettuce, tomato, but I got to have some good cheese. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Nice pick. What's the drink to go with the burger as well? Oh, the drink, you know, our team is, is really crafty with their cocktails, but you can't go wrong with classic margarita. Yeah, burger and a mark. Yep. I mean, that's kind of the, the Margaritaville paradise setting that we're creating here. So You got it. Very, very nice. Awesome. Jacqueline, thank you so much for having us out. Excited to see what the future holds for the property and look forward to future visits as thank well. Thank you so much. Great chat there with Jacqueline. Uh, that 18-hole putting course, par 72, real yeah. Bermuda grass, the bar in the middle of the course, I mean... Alex, why aren't you actually inviting me to come on these things? Because you're taking you're taking your wife, right? I know, right? I, what a fool. I'm much better company than your what, wife. No what offense an idiot to her. I she's, am. she's 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 amazing and all, but I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the one part when I actually I, I really did specifically think of you because I was like, you would just be blown away with everything that's going into the resources on this putting course. And it's it's a central focal point of the resort and a great introduction to golf for everyone like we mentioned with Jacqueline there so that's one that I'm definitely going to highlight in a video very soon and uh, there were some highlight moments as well in the match between me and my wife sorry I missed out on that one mm. oh well I'm sure we're, we're going to see it in a little bit. You'll have videos yep. hitting our YouTube channel from your time there. Right now, you can go up there and see uh, your video on Daddy Shack, uh, which is a mobile golf simulator that'll bring it to your backyard in the Austin, San Antonio, and Houston area. From if, if I'm remembering it all correctly, Alex, for sure, this look really cool. That you could just have it at your wedding, at your birthday party for a weekend. You know, maybe during football season, you can set it up if you're having a big big day watching the games or something to give your size. A little bit of a break. I, I just love, love this. That's a nice party idea for sure. Yeah. They should be at more parties. They're doing a lot of wineries and breweries. So shout out to Daddy Shack. It was cool to see what they have cooking. It's a deep simulator. It's got a lot of size to it. And it's a really awesome uh, installation for golf fans anywhere here in Central Texas. So yeah, check out that YouTube video on our page. Again, just search Course of Life Podcast on YouTube for all our videos and short clips as well. Let's do a little tuned in. There was stuff going on outside of the world of golf and sports this week. Yep. Um, and you got a couple of reviews, I, right? You watched a couple, couple of things. couple movie reviews for you, okay. Alex. Let's start with Unfrosted that I finally got to watch on Netflix. This is, of course, the Jerry Seinfeld written, directed, and starred movie about the creation of the Pop-Tart. Great snack. Always, always one of my favorites. Just, um, I, I a, love every a, flavor groundbreaking breakfast pastry that is shelf stable. And the best word I can use to describe this movie, and I say this as nicely as possible, is that this movie is dumb. But mm. in a good way, it's dumb humor, which is very maybe not what you think of with Jerry Seinfeld. Right. But, I mean, you, you think of it in terms of in the, the first five minutes of the film, Jerry Seinfeld is describe is telling the story of how the pop tart was created to a kid who's trying to run away from home so the parents have time to come and get their kid. Oh, he's stalling. So, is this a reliable story? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very interesting start to the plot right there. I was wondering yeah. what kind of humor Jerry was going to bring with this being his creation. And and yeah, the reviews weren't great. I feel like this is kind of giving the same vibes as B-Movie where it started out with not great reviews, but yeah. then maybe some people kind of came around to it with time. I don't know I if mean, this is the same kind of burn, but I am interested in this Pop-Tart story. By I Seinfeld. mean, and the cast alone, Jerry Seinfeld, Christian Slater, Jim Gaffigan, wow. Hugh Grant, Patrick Warburton, Amy Schumer. Uh, who else we got in here? I'm forgetting. Uh, there's, there's more in here that I'm just looking down the, the cast list because there's just so many. Uh, okay, so cast, dumb uh, humor from Unfrosted. Yeah. I wouldn't have predicted that adjective behind it, but good to know. Yeah, I think that I feel like that's the best the best word to use the best moment in the film though i will say uh, other than peter Tinkle dinklage showing up as the milk mafia boss yes okay cool uh is that 
they had to bring in some ad men from New York to help them come up with a name and an ad campaign for the Pop Tart. So they brought in this is 1960s. So they brought in John Hamm and John Slattery <laughs> playing their characters from Mad Men. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, good reference there. I love so, that. Good cameo good. all around too. Yes. So okay. I thought it was good. Uh, not laugh out loud funny, but it was still it was a good 90 minute watch. That was the one um, I was familiar with. And the other one yeah. that you're about to bring up here, I'd only seen by name, but this is yeah. a new release as well. This is new movie that just came out, Thelma. It's finishing up its uh, festival circuit as well. It was at Sundance. Uh, it was actually at the Atlanta Film Festival when I was up there with my wife. And uh, we almost got a chance to see it, but decided not to. We knew it was going to get cool. distribution. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's out now, just opened this weekend nationwide. June Squibb, who is 93, plays a 93-year-old grandmother who is conned out of some money and then goes on a Mission Impossible-style chase across the city to reclaim what she lost. At 93 years young, she's doing the chasing. 93. Uh, Okay, then. Yeah, and she does it with Richard Roundtree, who is the original Shaft. So. Interesting. Saying. Okay, uh, I'm just picturing a 93 year old on the chase right now. So that that's on a scooter. On a scooter. Oh, good. That's yes. a nice safe spot to do it. Yeah. Yes. This movie was fantastic. Um, really well done. A lot of fun. You'll laugh. You will certainly cry throughout it as well. Um, just a, a fantastic 90 minute watch. Uh, that is based on a true story. Uh, Writer director Josh Marigolin's grandmother actually did something like this. Or something similar. So, um, I mean, worth, you hear about ninety-three-year-olds getting conned all the time. So that, that's yes. a very realistic plot point where where it goes off the rails is her doing the chasing. So I'm interested yeah. to see that part. Yes, very good. Well worth it. Go find it in your local cinema. Uh, Thelma, not to be confused with Thelma and Louise. No, Thelma. No, no. Yes, different, different entirely. Okay, so two good reviews there, Unfrosted and Thelma. Check those out. Um, I was tuned in to all the buzz that's clickbaity in the world of everything pop culture. Eras tour update from London, watching live streams here and there, checking in, and the big headline from this past weekend, Mike, Travis Kelsey joining Taylor Swift on stage, playing a character within a song transition, and even carrying her away, much to the excitement of the crowd. Uh, I'm thinking the next step is this guy's probably going to to hop on a mic and they're going to start making music together as cringeworthy I mean, they, as that sound i think i think that's what's in the cards when are they going to get married that's the question right i know i mean the proposal on stage that that we can start placing your that bets be, on that yeah, that's de- that, now that's definitely worked into reality now that we saw kelsey on stage um, this all as we're about a month or so away from training camp begin so mm. how, how does it all coalesce as we head back to them trying to get a three-peat uh, for the nfl season upcoming uh, we're always staying on the the Travis uh, Kelsey Taylor Swift beat here on the Force Life. You know, I'm surprised though that, that it wasn't more because of Taylor getting her selfie with Prince William and the, and the royal kids. Yeah, thoughts on the London. prince's dancing there. He was really letting the hips wiggle I mean, there. That was there's a reason why we all wanted Prince William to be king and not his dad. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm also surprised that we're not actually talking about Justin Timberlake. Mm, yeah, I know. Ran a stoplight. Yep. Well, I, the tour goes on. You know, I just the tour does. We'll see what comes of that. But uh, yeah, interesting celebrity stuff in the news, and yeah, even the even the royalty at the Aero Store. Crazy. Hey, if you like everything we're doing on this podcast, including where we talk about random stuff out there in the world, make sure you punch that subscribe button, leave us a rating, a few stars, a thumbs up, a like, whatever it is that you feel is the best way to show us that you enjoy what you're listening to we would appreciate it share it with a friend and let them know let you uh find joy in what you listen to with us uh follow us on instagram col podcast course of life alex and m w r i n c alex is on x formerly known as twitter course of life one of course we're on youtube course of life podcast find us there as well our food content that we'll talk about at the end of the podcast is at always end with food on instagram We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about the Celtics. We'll talk about the Yankees and the Red Sox. And uh, we'll end with food. We'll be right back. Course of Life podcast is brought to you by Zencaster. We've been using Zencaster here since almost the very beginning as how Alex and I record this podcast from hundreds of miles away. 
and it provides us with great quality audio that works every time. And it's something that makes Course of Life what it is and has kept us being able to make consistent episodes every week. And now it's super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. You log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. You record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. You feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. And have you ever wondered what you actually sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. Head on over to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our promo code course of life to get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experiences we do for all of your podcasting and content needs. Again, that's Zencaster.com slash pricing and our promo code course of life. Zencaster, it's time to share your story. We're back just like the Celtics are back to being Oof. NBA champions, a record 19th title. 18. Board. I wish it was 19. 18. Mike. I'm sorry. 19. 18. One year from today. You know How's that sound? There you go. They're going to repeat because the entire starting lineup is back next year. Yep, the top six back. Five. We rolled through yeah. the playoffs with a 15 and three record. Mike never <laughs> even went to a game six. Throughout this entire championship run, I got to say, I've been through a lot of great runs, but I don't think I've ever had a championship run where there was so little of a sweat the entire time. It was Celtics all the way from start to finish. Banner 18 locked up. And uh, the, the the duck boat parade got an extra 90 minute head start thanks to so much traffic that the Celtics owner had to walk from where he parked his car to the 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 garden right S- carrying the banner and the trophy the humanity right <laughs> <laughs> how does he not have the private car ready for that moment but yes sh- or, classic or Boston traffic way too many people there having way too much fun and way too many drinks uh tons of them thrown at the players nobody injured fortunately our friend matt shearer from wbz tv saw a couple of loose beers go into the crowd that almost hit a baby in a stroller but all are okay and we all made it out unscathed from the celtics parade i unfortunately wasn't there but i got to watch in spirit on nba tv and uh yeah mike you know you know we've been suffering here in boston the long five plus year drought without a championship is over uh title town resumes in bean town so the nba season is over we can still talk hockey next week because we're recording on a sunday so we'll do a game seven recap next week stanley cup finals is still happening because the oilers just can't lose right now uh, they're doing a full on Boston Red Sox comeback right now uh, over over the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers, by the way, the new parent organization of the uh, Savannah Ghost Pirates minor league hockey team. Oh, just nice. Very cool. This week. Love that. Um, Love the minor so, league affiliations. Good stuff. So which is interesting because we were with the Vegas Golden Knights who were Stanley Cup champions. Shout out VGK. And now. We're with the Florida Panthers, who could be Stanley Cup champions. You're just you're just title hopping with your minor league affiliate there. I see. Pretty much, <laughs> if only the team was as good as the teams were were feeding. Right. <laughs> uh, but hey, let's talk baseball too, because we get to talk about baseball for a month now without any other sport really being in the way, except for hockey next week. Um, my Yankees are doing great, Alex. Yeah, I've been They're trying f- to avoid this. They are have these. Uh, third best record in baseball right now they had you know they're still a very good team they're getting hit by the injury bug just a little bit um they're making some moves to make it happen but aaron judge is a shoo-in right now to be a top three mvp finalist for sure yeah we're trending towards that all-star break just in a few weeks always love that time of the year nice bell uh, of where everyone sits halfway through the year as for my red Sox and boston sports nation we turn our attention to fenway now and honestly kind of pleasantly surprised surprised how relevant the Sox are uh with very bare bones pitching wise just kind of getting it done night in and night out had an impressive series against toronto and they're 
sitting in a wild card spot as we talk right now. So I, they're, they're really, they are hitting quota because the expectations were pretty dang low this season. I'd been curbing them all spring long, but they, they might rope me in, Mike. I don't love it when they do this, but they're right at that spot where they could rope me in for the summer here. I mean, they are the bottom. They are the third team in the wild card plants. You just got to get in. Right Never, we, we've seen that year in and yeah. year out. It doesn't really matter how you get in. If you just get a ticket to the dance, you, you got a chance to make a big run. It's all that matters. It's literally all that matters. So I don't think it will happen. I think your Red Sox suck and they're going to suck it up for the rest of the summer. But, uh, you know, it's all right. My Yankees will win the World Series and then it'll all be right in, right in the world. So you'll see. <laughs> Let's uh, hashtag always end with food. Yep. 19th whole content, bringing an end to the course of life podcast. You can check out at always end with food as well on Instagram, where I just posted a reel recapping everything I ate at Horseshoe Bay Resort. Mike, mm. you saw the meals ranging from the poolside burgers and the tachos to the cocktails on the deck and the seafood dishes everywhere. I even had bacon wrapped up opt- octopus. I was enjoying lake life to its fullest. Uh, but the highlight was the custom meal from Chef Miguel at the Cap Rock Clubhouse. It was some sort of fried amazing concoction with tomato, an amazing surf and turf, and a blackberry sorbet with chambord on top, which was just to die for. Um, so definitely a foodie filled resort trip as well, too. So again, check out at always end with food if you want if you want to see a little bit more of that as well. What was better, the food at Horseshoe Bay or the golf at Horseshoe Bay? Mm, it very close call, actually. And, and normally I would just easily answer the golf, but I'm not going to pander. It was probably only about 52, 53 percent golf and 47, mm. 48 food. Mike and the views don't help. It don't hurt either. When, when you got a, 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 a hilltop view overlooking literally the lake and the Texas Hill Country as you eat and you got Chef Miguel going at it with you, one of those meals, Mike, where you sit down and you don't even open the menu. The chef just comes and lets you know that he's just going to be bringing stuff out. That's that's when you know you're in for a treat at a restaurant. Yep. So again, if you want that experience, check out everything Horseshoe Bay has to offer. Uh, I'm going on a trip of my own this next week, Alex. Yes. Um, going going up to Dollywood to start the week off up in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Of course, the home of Dolly Parton. Smoky um, Mountains, right? Smoky Mountains. I've been there once before back. I think it was middle school. So we're talking the late 90s. Okay. Um, I've heard Gatlinburg's kind of now turned into like a bit of a refined, like buddies trip bachelor party place as well, too. It's got a very interesting setting from what I've heard, but I've never been there. Well, so what I would say after being there, uh, was it last year or the year before for a friend's wedding? I think it was two years ago for a friend's wedding. It is Tourist Town USA. Yep, I'm sure. It is It is uh, just horrendously touristy. Dolly, American icon, American but tourist town. Makes sense. Dollywood is different. Dollywood is is really gorgeous from, from what I remember and what uh, I'm seeing again as I as we look at where we're going and everything and the rides we want to go on. Um, of course, known for their for their shows as well and their history of Dolly Parton. They have a whole Dolly Parton experience. You can know all the history of Dolly as well. Uh, and, and they're known for their cinnamon bread. And Ooh. this is something I've been told I need to go try and then come back and recreate at the bakery. So cinnamon bread, not cinnamon, cinnamon roll, bread. cinnamon bread, cinnamon bread. Supposedly what they do is they like they get a loaf shape and they they like hassle back cut it. If you know what that is, you cut yep. all the way down, but not all the way through. Sure. And then they dr- dr- uh, cover it in butter and then cover it in cinnamon sugar and then bake it. I mean, that sounds like the makings of some great French toast as well, too. I mean, it sounds just incredible in every possible way. Um, so Cinnamon we're definitely going to need to get that. Uh, it's it's the summer food season as well for them. We actually already got like a, a, a food pass to try all their special summer foods. So certainly going to get some of that. It's Tennessee. You know they're going to have barbecue. So we're going to get plenty of that while we're there as well. We'll see. We'll see how great everything is. Nice. All right. Be sure to tag at Always End With Food in the stories. And we'll share that with everyone there as well, too. That's a great trip upcoming and a great trip that I had. Uh, Thanks for tuning in right now to The Course of Life, and we will see you next week.